Man, I, I really need to get a soundboard from my laptop or some shit. I have to figure that out. But yeah, man, as you can see, it's just me today. Uh, My good brother, my little brother. Somehow he's older than me. Jonathan Vallejo is uh is tending to family. You know what I mean? It's the holiday season. And he's got family coming into town. He just had family leaving. So he's got a lot going on. So, you know what I mean? Didn't want to miss too many episodes. So your boy had to record by himself. Yo, my hair is out of control, son. Yeah, man. So, yeah, so obviously it's Whiskey Wednesday, so I got the whiskey in the glass, that's what I do, I drink and I know things, shout out to my wife who made it for me, and the cricket took her seven minutes, <coughs> oh, oh. Ah, that's a that's the real reaction right there, that shit is still strong, but yeah, so obviously man, it's a lot, it's a lot been going on, Thanksgiving was last week. It was tough. I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to, like, sugarcoat it, try to be cool. It was our first Thanksgiving without uh, being w- with my wife's family. I think we had missed one other one when she was feeling under the weather. Um, It was tough, man. Like, we did all the cooking ourselves. That was kind of cool. And that took a lot of our time of, like, not thinking about the fact that we were away from our family, away from our loved ones, this COVID-19 has been a motherfucker, man. We've lost, uh, we've lost a close friend this year. We, my, my best friend, my two best friends lost, uh, lost someone very close. I'm not going to get into that because that's, I mean, that's their business. But yeah, man, it's been kind of tough. It actually, when that happened, it, I'll say this about my, my experience with it, right? Like it shook me. It became, this COVID-19 thing became like really real at that point. Where it sucks that that's what had to happen, you know, just giving you my honest opinion. Obviously, it wasn't like I've ever been like an anti-masker or this shit's a hoax, like fucking idiots are on the internet. But it just, it became, it, it became sobering, right? Like seeing people who I care about and love going through this pain and suffering, Um, it became too much, right? Like I, I couldn't see myself being with my family and like feeling comfortable. Cause my wife's family is right. They're my they're my family. They're since the very beginning they welcomed me with open arms, and I just couldn't see myself uh, being in that situation. God forbid that I'm asymptomatic or my wife is asymptomatic or somebody there is, and then it spreads, and then it just becomes this whole fucking wildfire of of emotions and fear, and you know it's it's what we went through when I don't I don't know. It's weird, but. Yeah, man, so, like I said, like, what crowded most of the day was the cooking. I was in charge of smoking the turkey. It was rough. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that like, I, I killed it because it was kind of a makeshift smoke. I ended up smoking it on a on a gas grill, which took a little bit longer. It took about five and a half hours. It didn't, a gas grill doesn't keep the same kind of temperature and heat that, like, a pellet smoker or a regular offset smoker or different kind of smokers will do because that's what it's dedicated to do, right? Like, I was just trying to, like... MacGyver uh, away into into smoking because I kind of like came up with the idea last minute and I wasn't going to buy a $400 smoker when, you know what I mean, money is what it is. Like we got we got bills and shit, can't just splurge like that on a on a thing that like I possibly might not use again. But as much videos as I have, I'm definitely going to use it a lot more than I'd probably use my grill because it's a little bit easier than grilling. Like with smoking, you could just set it and kind of forget it. It's kind of like a very expensive crock pot in a way where it cooks where you could smoke stuff for like 8, 10, 12, 16 hours, depending on the on the brisket size or the turkey size. Definitely the brisket. The brisket is what you're going to smoke that long. But ended up tasting really juicy uh, Had to and after I smoked it. It wasn't quite right, so it wasn't quite cooked through, you know, being honest. Then I had to throw it in the oven for another hour and a half, I think an hour and 45 minutes. So in total, it was almost a seven-hour cook. But it came out delicious. And it was weird because, like, my wife and I don't eat the dark meat of the of the turkey. We're more like white meat people. So half the turkey kind of went to waste. And it felt, it was, it was, it was a weird feeling, like, throwing away that kind of food. And all the food was delicious. But, like, once the food settled and we were, we were just sitting around when we usually would have been sitting around with her family talking shit and, you know, having a couple of drinks and laughing and joking like we've done the last seven years. Six out of the last seven years, uh, we just kind of sat there and it was like, got kind of depressing, you know. It, uh, 
it was tough just sitting on the couch and, you know, just kind of like binging Brooklyn Nine-Nine or watching, you know, whatever was on TV, just trying to kill time. Wife started crafting. We made sure to make the most of it. Like Friday we went, we went out to to do some shopping, not like for Black Friday shit, just like to get out of the house because Thursday was kind of rough. And then it was just like, just not being with family was weird. And I know I'm not the only one, right? Like I have, I got pictures from my family that, like my aunt is always like 30 or 40 people at her house. And there was only two other people, which was my oldest cousin, his daughter, blessings to her, you know, premature baby and, and his wife. And then my cousin, Giancarlo stayed home with his, with his kids and his wife. Everybody was kind of separate. You know, it was, I think I'm just echoing things that like a lot of people talked about and, you know, so a lot of people stayed home and it was just, it just had a, there was an eerie feeling, obviously, for some, some, a lot of people, it was harder than others, right? Like, you know, people lost people during this time, and I'm just echoing how how difficult it is being away from family. But I can't imagine how difficult it would be to, like, never see that family again. You know, it's tough, man. A little depressing, but, yeah. So, the turkey came out really juicy. I'm just trying not to, like, dwell on, on that side of it. Um, The turkey came out really juicy. Till I think we finished it, you know, leftovers last forever, especially when it's just two of us. Um, we uh, I think we finished it like one Monday because today's Wednesday. We finished it like Monday or Tuesday, ate the rest of it, and whatever we didn't finish that was about to turn, we go ahead and gave it to the chickens, those little raptors. So they worked as our garbage disposal and they took care of that. But yeah, man. Holiday season's weird. Like, we're not sure what to do for Christmas. We kind of have an idea. We're probably just going to stay home again and be safe and make the hard decision. That's not, it's not an easy one. Like, it's not something like, I mean, I don't want to see family and yada, yada. It's more like, I don't, I'm a, I'm afraid to. Like, there's this, like, uneasiness about it when, like, half the, whatever, half the population is like, oh, this isn't even real. But you've seen people that have been directly affected by it. You kind of have to make a decision that's, that's uncomfortable. It's... It's difficult to make. It's not something that I take lightly, you know, like being away from my wife's mom or my mom. Like it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's, uh, it's definitely, hopefully this isn't the new normal. You know, we're getting some good news with the vaccine, uh, possibly starting up here soon. I think UK is already going to start doing like 800,000 vaccines. Hopefully that works out well. And, you know, we get this get this world back restarted because it kind of feels like like the end of infinity war you know what i mean when like in the beginning of uh end game when everybody's just trying to figure out what life is with the new normal well obviously that's a movie but it's just i don't know it's fucking weird bro it's fucking weird but all the food came out delicious my wife made a green bean casserole that i fucking destroyed i think i licked the plate clean like two days later um the was it the cornbread souffle was delicious the what was it uh, mashed potatoes was fucking great the gravy was awesome all of it came out great all of it came out really good like all of it was was phenomenal for like i think my wife well, at the beginning of covid we we made like a, a turkey a turkey dinner because <clears throat> we had a turkey in the fridge for in the freezer for a long time so we're like yeah we might as well cook this shit and we did it and that came and we cooked that in the oven and that came out great but yeah, I don't know. Listen, this is a this is not an easy podcast to do because it's it's a lot of emotions that are happening, right? Like it's difficult as a, as a man, right? Like for us as men, like it's it's that old thing where like you don't oh don't talk about your emotions, bottle that shit in, uh, you know, just cry in the corner or cry in the closet, you know what I mean? Like keep all that shit bottled in, and it's tough when you're seeing the people you love. Or you can't see the people you love and the people, the people you love have like lost people and there's nothing you could do to comfort them. You know, you can't, you can't go down and see them because you're scared of, you know, giving them a hug and then something and something else happens. And it's just this weird, like we lost a, a very close friend of ours three months ago today and we couldn't go to like, we, like we couldn't go to the funeral because it just, it, it was scary. You know, it's, it's rough, man. Like it's. It's fucking, ah, uh, it sucks. I fuck, 2020 is 100% the fucking worst. But yeah, 
one one weird thing that happened. I got my eyes checked. I just try to, you know, try not to harp on it too much. Got my eyes checked last week. Yeah, I got my eyes checked last week, and my vision got worse. So I'm officially getting old as fuck. Uh, my right eye is a little worse than my left because I'm right eye dominant. So that's how we're gonna that muscle, that eye muscle is gonna work a little harder. So I lost a little bit of a, a strength in that one. I sort of got. <laughs> If the doctor would have been like, yo, man, you need bifocals, I would have been like, fuck you, I'm out. I'm not getting no bifocals. You know, bifocals is like when you get that little thing under the lens. I got friends that like need glasses. You know what I'm talking about, motherfucker. That need glasses that refuse to get them. So somehow I trusted that motherfucker with my life. All the years we go out and drinking and partying. I don't know how you were always a designated driver, bro. When you listen to this, I expect the text. Be like, yeah. And because I know he guys like he had pictures and videos of me when I would like throw up on the side of the highway. I don't know how he focused on the pictures because he had no fucking vision, but whatever. Um, yeah, so my vision's getting worse. Got new glasses. They fit a little bit better. When I first put them on, because like the magnif- I felt like it was a little bit magnified because I was wearing the wrong prescription for so long. Because it's probably been like 18 months since I got my eyes checked. And I don't know. So, yeah. So, I got my eyes checked. Got a different prescription. Got new contacts. So, I got that done. Makes me feel like getting that done makes it feel like something's a little bit normal. You know, because it was my first, like, doctor's appointment since... It sounds like getting COVID checked since uh, since COVID started. So, at least I was like, oh, this is a normal thing that's happening. Because you still go to the Walmart or the Winn-Dixie's or the Publix's and toilet paper's running low again and... So you have like these moments of like back to 2019, but you flash forward right into 2020 as you walk into the next store. Then you go to some of the stores like jam packed with shit and people and Black Friday shopping and everybody's out on the road. Probably because, you know, everybody's has the same kind of anxiety and uh, and shit that, that most of us have. All of us have. Right. Like we don't know how to deal with shit like this. Like this is this hasn't happened in 100 years. So you got to give people some kind of leeway. They're dealing with some different emotions that they've never dealt with before. But yeah, I mean, Thanksgiving was Thanksgiving was definitely rough. I know it was rougher for a lot more people than it was for us. But just want to know, just want to let you guys know that, you know what I mean? Like, we're all in this together. Not to be cliche-ish, even if that's a word. But just understand that... Uh, I don't know. It's fucking weird. Just understand that we will we'll figure this out some somehow, some way. For some people, it'll never be normal again. Some people lost too much during this time. And if you were one of those people, reach out to friends. Don't isolate yourself. There's always somebody else who loves you, cares for you, and wants to have your back. <sighs> God damn, that was a that was a depressing like 14 minutes right there. Probably should uh should lighten it up. Let's go on to the next topic, guys. All right, man. Queen's motherfucking Gambit. This show was the shit. We finished it in three days. It came out like a month, over a month ago. I think it was like October 23rd. If you see right here on my right, your left, depending on how you're watching this. Because you could be watching like Upside Down or some shit. Um, but yeah, man. This was a really good show. What I Listen, I've, I've had a long... Long time discussion with my little brother, Joshua Hamong Pastor, as I like to call him. That's uh, in Japan hanging out. I've always had issues with female roles in the lead, right? And not because the females in the like they've. I feel like they've always been written in this weak, in this like overtly weak or overtly strong way. That's not. That's not real life. And th- what I appreciate about this role. And mind you, this is a podcast named Manchester, so I'm gonna give it to you real. What I appreciate about this role is like it was the most genuine way I've seen a female role like played in in a while, probably since like The Crown, right? So Netflix got two really good ones, where like a woman's just a human being, right? It's not like this like overly emotional entity that's its own thing, you know. But again, like because I assume, right? I assume that most of these roles are written by men, that because we. Us as men, like I said at the beginning, we tend to not want to talk about our emotions. We project women to be these overly emotional things, which is, which is unrealistic. But this show, man, it's about chess. Queen's Gambit is a move in chess. 
Don't I, I don't I've played I haven't played chess in a long time, so I'm not gonna like sit down and break the Queen's Gambit down or with the Sicilian or the open Sicilian or close Sicilian. These are just topics, these are just references that I got from the show. I didn't I don't know what the fuck these are. Like depending how you move your rook over your queen, I don't know. Whatever. I know some of the pieces, like the pawns, I know some of the pieces, the names of them, but that's not that's not what this is like. Just the show of it. Like she's dealing with a lot of stuff, but she's a savant. She just picks up chess right away. And just it's such a such a good show, man. Like the depth of the characters, the depth of her, like her having so much loss. It's kind of like loosely based on uh, Bobby Fisher, an actual person. This is this is a fictional show. It's not based on anybody real. Like there's no this never happened. I'm 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 not saying that like women don't play chess and that didn't happen, but like these series of events didn't happen to a specific person. It was just kind of like made up for TV. But yeah, it uh, I think we binged like four episodes last night, you know, because I was off today, and it was just a very entertaining. And the way each episode ended, like, oh, you're gonna have to watch another one. And it was just like the teamwork of people at the end. Oh man, just I highly recommend this show. Like I'm, kind of, I'm not gonna sit here. It might not be for everybody. You might find chess incredibly boring, but it's not just about chess. Like chess is maybe seven minutes of each 46 to hour and seven minute episode right but even that we're like with the music they they include and the way the the way it's shot and all this other shit like it's it's very entertaining like for some people i'm, I'm assuming some people are gonna watch it like oh, i want to play chess i might i might get a fucking uh what was it like a there was not not cards of chess but like i might get a chess board and and uh and get some moves going and watch youtube and you know what I mean? YouTube can teach you how to play chess. It'd be cool to learn. It's a thinking man's game. It's a thinking person's game. Thinking man's was kind of sexist. Huh? <laughs> Think it's a thinking person's game, and it's it's really entertaining, man. I really it's a mini series too, so you're not gonna have to like, oh man, I gotta wait for season two. No, this, this is it. It's one season, seven episodes. The lo- the last episode's an hour and seven minutes. Um, I highly recommend it. It's it's a really good fucking. It's a really they like. They reference a lot of like real chess players. It's definitely it's for to me it's a must watch. You know, like I I'm well documented, huge TV guy, huge movie guy. I've basically seen everything. Minus what haven't I watched? I haven't watched much of SWAT, like newer episodes, like newer shows I haven't really much watched. And I'm still binging Brooklyn Nine Nine, season six going strong. Whoop whoop. But yeah, man. It's been this has been something that's helped us take our mind off everything going on you know you kind of just escape into it and and it feels better besides like walking the dog and dealing with his surgery you know thankfully he got his stitches taken out he was not a fan of going to the vet and i don't know <laughs> i gotta say this is elijah craig whiskey does not get easier to drink who it's keeping me warm like i was cold as shit hence why i put the hoodie on because it's 30 degrees here yeah, in Florida, it's thirty. I think it was like thirty-eight degrees today. So hence the jacket. But like now, I'm wearing the jacket and drinking the whiskey. I am warm. Like I got beads of sweat running down my fucking face. It's fucking wild. But yeah, Queen's Gambit. Every episode explains something. She's a. I'm not telling you she's like a drug addict at a very early age. Uh, she's a, like I said, she's a savant, an orphan. It's just a deep, deep show, man. Like I said, if you don't like chess. Still watch it. I think you'll highly, highly enjoy it. I really enjoyed every episode. Like, we paced ourselves a little bit. We watched three one day and then four another. It's kind of just how that went. Because we've been watching, you know, because it's a heavier show. And things are heavy enough as it is. <laughs> but, uh, so we've been binging, like, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Because it's just a funny show. And it's, I would, listen, I'm going to say this. It's almost, it's the second funniest show I've ever seen, besides The Office. And it's close. It's consistently, because The Office had a drop after Steve Carell left, right? That's that's just, let's be real about that. Steve Carell is one of the greatest characters in a sitcom ever, if not the greatest. And, you know, debatable. It's an opinion, guys. Chill. Um, But the the consistency of writing and the fact that they continue storylines way seasons in, not just like 
the Ross and Rachel aspect, which is like the Jake and Amy thing on, on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but each other supporting character, you know, you know, it's, it's an amazing show. I love, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We're going to watch some more episodes after I get off here, after I eat some, uh, some good old chicken soup that my wife cooked up. Shit is delicious. I hate soup, but it makes good chicken soup. But yeah, um, I don't know. Queen's Gambit, bro. Fuck, it's such a good show. I might rewatch it, and I might take up chess because of it. Or I might not. Or I will. It's really up in the air. I got biking that I got to get back into. Going hiking this weekend. You know, just trying to stay active. Try to stay out of the house, man. And just try to do different things. Without traveling. Because, God, I wanna, we want to fucking travel. I want to travel so bad. Go to fucking Liverpool and see a match there. Or go to Norway. Go to who anywhere, man. Tired of driving. Want to just catch a flight. Take a couple pills. Regular pills, like flying pills. Like relax. Not like drugs. Take a couple pills and just fly it off. And wake up in a new country and enjoy the world again. You know, it's been, it's been fucking crazy. Speaking of fucking crazy. I'm going to try not to rant. And cuss my head off on this one. Real Madrid. Listen, I've it's well documented. I came in when Real Madrid was great. I came in off the off the legs of James Rodriguez. Um, that World Cup in 2014, and him scoring that. So it was what going? Ah, damn, it's eight years now. Yeah, eight years of being a Madrid fan. And seeing Ronaldo on that team, and Bale, and Benzema, and a young Cruz, and Modric, and Casemiro, and fucking Sergio Ramos eight years ago, and Varane, and the uh, Dani Ceballos, all these all all these players that came in and out. But now I don't recognize this team, man. And it's not. I always thought. Listen, uh, I always thought that when we when Ronaldo left, I was like, oh, we got young players. We got like Asensio. East goal, we got we got these young players that'll do their thing, and none of them have really taken a step forward. Not a single one. Not one is a dedicated starter. Five years, three years ago, you don't know who Fede Valverde was, and now he's kind of the heart and soul of the team. You're relying on all these older players. They're just they're hard to watch. Like I'm, it's gotten to the point where in the middle of the day watching them, it's so boring, and it's so predictable that I start falling asleep during the matches. Like it's gotten it's gotten rough. It's it's hard to watch. Yesterday they lost again to a team that gave up ten goals to Borussia Mönchengladbach and Shakhtar Donetsk. Best pronunciation of that. But it's just it's hard to watch, man. Like they're just they're very predict. They don't do anything. Like they just look like it's almost like a Legends League now, or a Legends team where like. These are the people that that have done stuff, but none of them going forward are doing anything. And you have Varang that plays like absolute trash. This is a world-class center back that plays like absolute trash. He plays like if I'm playing in La Liga. I'm saying like I have no experience playing organized soccer in any kind of way. He makes these passes that don't make any sense at all whatsoever. He does he oh, It's just... It's hard to watch a team that is my number one European soccer team. I don't, you know, I got Inter Miami, my number one MLS team. In most countries, no, not really, not most. That'd be a lie. Uh, Liverpool and uh, Wolves and EPL. Wolves, obviously, because of uh, of Daryl Grove, God rest his soul, um, put me onto them from the from the Total Soccer Show, and then in La Liga you have Real Madrid, obviously. Real Madrid is more like the Golden State Warriors, um, you know. And now, now they're struggling. Now they got all the. Basically, it's an identical kind of thing, where like they were dominant for so long, and now they can't pick anybody up and are ravished with injuries with the guy they signed. You had Clay Thompson go down last week, or two weeks ago now, tearing his Achilles, and Eden Hazard for Real Madrid cannot stay on the pitch, can't play longer than sixty minutes, and just looks like. A shell of a shell of a shell of himself, and there's they have no creativity going forward. There's no, there's just like I can't even think of like through balls or overloads that they do 
because they're afraid to get countered. So it's just the three players, and then Cruz and Modric don't really show up in there. Fede Valverde, like these, like they should have blown it up after Ronaldo left and just started started fresh, it, which is an easy thing to say, right? Because they still have to compete for. They don't want to get relegated. Um, started you know piece by piece each summer, like dropping somebody, picking somebody up in the summer and winter windows. And figured it out, but man, like not making any moves, and just the only thing you do is call back Odegaard from Real Sociedad that was on loan a season early. He's not providing you much going forward. Where he was almost a player of the league last year. There's something going on. Like I th- and me and me and my best friend Danny, right? I got I got a bunch of best friends. All my all, all the friends that I still have today are all my best friends because you know what I mean it's just what it is. Quality over quantity. For so long, we talked about, man, man, they just don't care about La Liga. All they care about is Champions League, and which is because they would struggle in La Liga, but like limp through and still get second or third place. I think one time only one with Ronaldo all the years, they were winning Champions Leagues. And now, because I think that that thought process became pervasive over the entire team and the whole organization were like, now they don't care about anything. It's like, I don't know, we'll turn it on when we when we need to. And now they can't because they don't have the same talent that they used to have. There's no Ronaldo on that team. Benzema is older. Uh, Bale's gone. Cruz is old. Modric is old. Asensio hasn't taken a step forward. Uh, Ferlan Mendy's making huge mistakes with his uh, French compatriot, uh, Varane. You have Eden Hazard that can't stay on the pitch. Fede Valverde is injured. Odegaard is, isn't going to get chosen for some reason over... Modric or Cruz on a consistent basis. Casemiro's injured. Danny, uh, Danny Carvajal is uh, injured, having a ton of, you know, I think he's had COVID-19 issues. It's it's just depressing. Like, it's hard. It's hard to watch this team, man. And I don't, listen, uh, Zinedine Zidane, one of the greatest midfielders of all times, depending where you put him on the pitch. And now one, one of the best managers Real Madrid has ever had. I mean, three and three straight uh, Champions League, beating everybody. And when he wore that, when they were on the pitch, there was no stopping them. I think they need a new voice in that locker room. I'm not calling for him to be fired. I'm not calling for him to resign. You know, he can do whatever he wants. He's forgotten more soccer than more football than I'll ever know. But it just seems like they're not responding to him anymore. There's just that uh, there's something missing on that team. I don't know what it is, and it's not just a Sergio Ramos on the lineup. Because they struggle with Sergio Ramos too. Sergio Ramos is older. He's 34, 35 years old now. That's old as shit in soccer. Especially in European soccer when everybody's like literally half your When you could have kids in the league at his age. Right? Like you have players that are like 16, 17 years old. Look at Ansu Fati for Bar- Barcelona. You have Liverpool playing all these young guys. You can't have this kind of dependency on such older players. This isn't you. This isn't the Italian league. You know, where you could have, like, that's the basically the retirement. Like, look look at Slatan, almost 40 years old and balling out over there. That that, that can't be that can't be what happens to my Real Madrid, man. It's a la Madrid y nada más, but they're hard to watch, bro. They're hard to watch. They're boring. You know, they're, they're, they're just absolutely and utterly boring. They defend like I do when I'm playing online on with FIFA. With my shitty, terrible internet. They cannot stop a counter to save their lives. Every team does the same thing and they can't stop it. They sit back and just wait and then hit them with an overhead with a overhead pass or a through ball. And it's off to the races. And somehow Varank dribbles it back to the player and sets them up for a goal. It almost, it's almost like he's playing for the other team. They're hard to watch, man. I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. They're going to have to figure something out. But it's... It's tough, dude. It's tough. All right, guys. We'll catch you again on Sunday. Hopefully, my good brother, my little brother, my older brother somehow. My six months, dude. It's four months. It's so annoying. He's 5'3 and struggled to fucking scoot snow or whatever it is, to shovel snow. But he's older than me by four months. He's literally up to my elbow. It's fucking annoying. All right, guys. Catch you next time. As always, cheers.